Hi, I'm Dre. I'm your mindset coach and mentor change, and I am always thankful for our time together. Today, we look to answer the question, how do you become the champion of your life? Now, this is something that you probably noticed that I end pretty much every episode, every article, every podcast with where I'm saying continue blessings on your journey to become the champion of your life. And someone had asked me, well, well, Dre, what does that mean? And I was like, well, let me go ahead and put an episode together where we could talk about it, where I really lay out what I mean when I say for you to become the champion of your dream life. Now, part of it has to do with my book, Champion of Change. So it's kind of like a take on that where you're being a champion and that's short for champion of change because everybody wants to change something in their life. Most professionals want to change something but they are discouraged by the fears and self-doubt that their false beliefs create. And so I want to help you get over those fears and self-doubt so that you're able to create the results that you want in your life. And when you're able to do that, that is you becoming a champion, in a sense at least. And so I want you ultimately to look at yourself as the solution to all the problems in your life. We're trained by society to look externally, where we, we think we need to buy this, we need to purchase that and get this and happiness is over there and comfort is in this but it's always inside of you and that is actually one of the staples and principles of my coaching practice it's the idea that it's not about me that it's about you it's about what you have inside of you is already enough to create the life that you want i simply just remind you share some things that you say and offer a little bit of insight to just move some of these obstacles out of the way. But it's not changing anything about you. It's already there. You are a champion. You are the hero of your life. You are the most outstanding, honest, caring, creative, go-getting person. Go get it. It's really that simple, right? Like, I don't, I don't know how else to really word it. So I just simply am saying exactly what's on my mind. I'm trying to be authentic and as compassionate as I can and as understanding as I can. I hope that you can feel that, that you understand that I genuinely believe and that you have the ability to do anything that you are willing to set your mind to and put in the work to accomplish. And I often, when we're having arguments, it's a lot has to do with you telling me that you can't do it and me telling you that you can do it. But I'm not just going to tell you, we're going to kind of work on it together. And so when I'm telling you like, hey, let's let's get, make it so that you are the champion of your dream life, I'm really talking about like four things. Number one, I'm talking about you got to make sure you believe in yourself, right? And a lot of the belief has to do with the idea that we're fearing failure. And so a lot of our self-doubt comes from this failure. So why do we have this fear? Because we're looking for perfectionism. So if you fall short in the leave it busy way, You end up saying, well, see, I did it again. I can't do this. It's not meant for me. Let me just stop right now. Failure is clearly up ahead. The bridge is out. But I'm simply here to tell you, look, that that was like a three steps up, one step back. You still net two steps up. Let's keep moving. But if you have told yourself that perfection is what's necessary and anything else is failure, yeah, yeah. It's going to be discouraging for you to move forward because you're not going to be perfect. Now, I am definitely someone who says, you know, reach for the moon. Go for it. Reach for the moon. You fall short. You land among the stars. Like, I am that guy. But at the same time, I also understand that I'm talking a lot about effort. That you put in maximum effort and then you're content with the results because there's so much that you can't control. You know, for example, if you were trying to be promoted in your company then you understand that it has a little bit to do with you, i.e. you have the opportunity to showcase your skills and talents, you've put in the work, you've gotten the good reviews, and you're a team player and all that other stuff. But it also has to do with the fact that at some point, there's only so many leadership roles available. And so you need someone to get promoted or to retire or something to go on so that you have the opportunity to fill that role. And so at some point, it doesn't fall on you, right? That's outside of you. But if you focus on what you have control over and crush that, well, then the opportunity comes and you're ready. But you got to be content with the idea that it just may not come. And you want to make sure that you understand 
um, that you're trusting yourself, right? You're not putting your trust in other people. I run into clients all the time that put their trust in someone else where if it's their idea, they're skeptical of it. But then if their spouse says literally the exact same thing, it's the best idea ever. And that's something that's just kind of conditioned over time where sometimes we end up attracting opposites. I think most of the time we attract opposites because the the overall goal is for us to create this perfect person. And a lot of the times that is going to be your, your better half, as we always joke and say, because they have the strengths that complement your weaknesses and vice versa. So if you end up dealing with a lot of confidence issues where you're you're struggling with some fears and self-doubt, you often find that you're drawn to someone else who is confident because confident because you're you're looking for the anchor, that rock, that foundation. But even though that is, you know, not necessarily a bad thing, it can be if that person becomes your dragon slayer. And what I mean when I say that is it's up to you to slay your own dragons. You are the hero of your story. And sometimes this has to do with things from childhood where your parents constantly slayed the dragons in your life. When someone picked on you or did whatever, your parents came in there and picked on them. If someone told you that you were too slow to do this, your parents were running the race and winning it for you. If you felt overwhelmed with school and your project, your parents did the homework for you. This is them slaying all of your dragons. And so then you become an adult who ends up believing that you were slaying my dragons because you didn't think I could do it. And even though we may not articulate it on a conscious level, it is a subconscious reaction is every time something bad happens, my parents swoop in and save the day. And so then you get, you're attracted to someone that reminds you of your parent and they end up being a, your dragon slayer too. And so it almost becomes a crutch, but my goal is to kick the crutch out of the way and help you to trust in yourself and to put the strategies in place for you to become the champion of your life. And a lot of that has to do with just allowing yourself to make mistakes and not allowing the fear of failure to cause you to not take any action at all. Number two is you just want to be important to someone else, i.e. be someone's angel. If you want to be the champion of your life, if you want to build your confidence, if you want to see some tangible, fulfilling, satisfying events, I'm telling you, there's no better way than just to give and give a lot. Be selfless, be courteous, be giving, and you will find that it dramatically increases the perception that you have of yourself. It's hard for you to look at yourself as anything other than um, an angel, a, a hero to someone else, because that's how they see you. If someone is telling you how amazing you are, how timely your help was, how considerate you are, how blessed they are to have you in their life, it's really hard for you to look at yourself and say, well, no, I'm not any of that. No, I have seen people where it works, but in that sense, I would just say, give more to even more people. If you're really stubborn, where it's very hard for you to change your perception of yourself, you just keep being grateful and selfless in your interactions with more and more people, and eventually you're going to realize that all of these people know something and they have something nice to say about me, then maybe I should give myself a chance. And I think that that's a pretty cool thing if you think about it. Number three is you just want to focus on creating results. And I talk about this a little bit where it's just the idea that you're not task oriented. And what I mean by that is if your goal is to lose five pounds and you feel like you need to go to the gym three days a week, the task is going to the gym three days a week. The goal and the result is losing five pounds. If you find that you need to go to the gym six days, we'll do that because you're focused on the result, the outcome, the goal. If you find you only have to go to the gym one day a week, we'll do that. Stop focusing on the task saying that, well, I need to go five days a week. Well, well maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe if you change the, what you do as far as your eating, you may be able to go fewer days a week. It really gives you a lot of freedom to make the decisions that you want. And you find that you're dealing a lot with the fear of uncertainty. We like tasks because it helps us to know that we're checking off our boxes and getting where we need to go. But sometimes you find that these tasks that you're checking off, they don't actually help you get any closer to your goal. If you focus on the results, then you're able to 
easily realize that I'm not where I need to be. Let me make some changes. If you just focus on the task, then you're simply saying, you know what? I was supposed to do this. I did that and it didn't work. Mm, it makes it difficult for you to keep going because we're focused on the outcome and the goal. Because you are going to be the champion of your life, then your goal is to be the champion. You're going to do whatever it takes to get the outcome that you want. And you're not going to worry about the, the task at hand, right? The task can be changed. This is just the blueprint to get to the outcome. As long as you're willing to understand that, then you'll always be able to make those adjustments. If you're focused on the task, then it doesn't make sense to make the adjustment because you're accomplishing the goal that you set. The goal that you set is to go to the gym five days a week. I got a gym membership and I go five days a week. Sure, I just sit in the hot tub or sure, I just watch TV and talk to people, but I go there five days a week. No, make a smart goal. Say you want to burn 300 calories at the gym and then now you know, right? Hey, I burned my 300 calories. I'm going to leave the gym. Everything's working grand. It's just the power of setting uh, goals that are based on outcome and not goals that are based on task. Number four is you got to stop giving into fear if you're going to be the champion of your life. And you have to understand the birth of fear and self-doubt is inaction. Anyone who is looking at something and saying, I may fall, this may not go well, I may embarrass myself. All you're doing is feeding that fear and self-doubt. If I could just get you to take a little bit of action and then you realize I'm still here. Everything's okay. I think I got this figured out after all. You'll find that it increases the chance of you taking another step. As long as you celebrate the small wins, I guarantee you'll be able to keep building on that momentum. When you stop, you find it difficult to start again. And, you know, the momentum example, they're talking about the train, how difficult it is to get a train going, but how easy it is once it's going. It doesn't need much to keep going once you have the locomotive moving. And that's what you want to do with your progression towards your goal. You put the blueprint in place, you know exactly what you need to do, and then you take those small steps to do it, and you celebrate each of those accomplishments along the way. And you'll find that it's like feeding yourself a little trail towards your goal where you're like, oh, look, one more piece of candy, right? One more reward because I was able to do something I wanted to do. Oh, look, there's one more. Oh, I am a little bit closer. This is like a game. I'm really enjoying this. I want to uh, get a raise at my job. I've talked to my boss. We got a plan in place and I'm checking off all my little boxes. I feel a lot better now about this. It dramatically changes just the way that you perceive the situation and the overall outcome that you have when you're able to do this. And number five is you just want to find your superpower. If you want to be the champion of your life, then you have to understand that you are a superhero. And do not compare yourself to others and look at their superpowers and be like, oh, do I have that power? They have the power to fly. Do I have that ability? They have the power to teleport or super speed or super strength. Do I have that ability? Well, well, no, that's not your goal. Your goal is to look at what you got going on, see what you're doing, where you're excelling, how does that help the company and the organization? And then you see, well, I think that this is my superpower. And then you try to hone in and work on that. And you're like, okay, I'm sort of there, but I actually think that this is my superpower. Or you may be one of those superheroes that have multiple superpowers where you're overpowered and you're just like destroying everything. Maybe you're like the, the Superman or as the Miss Marvel is or the Captain Marvel is they're about to start talking about with the next um, infinite, uh, with the next Avengers movie. Either way, I just want you to focus on you. Look at your strengths. And you find that a lot of the time we're spending so much time looking at our weaknesses that we don't realize how many strengths that we have. Look at your strengths, see what you're crushing it at, and don't take it for granted. It's because you see it every day, you take it for granted, you're just like, well, this is me, this isn't that big of a deal. But I guarantee you, someone in your life has been like, that is amazing, I can never do that, that's so cool, could you show me how to do it? You're like, oh, it's nothing much. It's something, it's your superpower. It is the thing that you do that isn't very difficult for you, but it helps you create the results that you want, and I want you to find what your superpower is. You know, like, I've... I have a couple. I'm pretty good at making blueprints from where point A is to where point B is. 
it's just the way my mind works. I've been made, doing puzzles since I was a kid. I've done puzzles so much growing up. I've had bins where puzzles started getting boring. So instead of me putting each individual puzzle in its own box, I would put like 10 puzzles in one bin and then I would put all 10 puzzles together separate. Like that's just my superpower. I'm able to see things clearly like that. And of course me growing up being me, I just thought that that's what everybody did. Like puzzles just came easily to people. But I've done stuff where I went to like a summer camp and it was a part of the obstacle course where you had to have people do puzzles and they were backwards where you couldn't see the picture, you could only see the shape. I did that puzzle in like two minutes. And then we switched around and someone else did it and they didn't finish it. And I remember being like, you didn't finish the puzzle. Well, that's my superpower. It just happens to be that I've had it my whole life, so I've never contemplated that other people don't have it. But you get what I'm saying here, that the idea that you don't have a superpower is laughable. So if you're going to say, Dre, I don't have a superpower, I'm going to laugh at you. I just want to let you know that, full disclosure, I will laugh at you. So now that we're past that, let's find what our superpower is. What is something that comes easy to you that you enjoy doing? What is something that other people are wowed by that you don't think is that big of a deal? These are good places to start when you're trying to figure out what your superpower is. And I'll just read over the five things so that you can understand exactly what I mean when I am saying that you need to become the champion of your life. Number one is you need to believe in yourself. Number two is you want to be someone's angel. Number three is you want to focus on creating results. Number four is you stop giving in to fear and self-doubt. And number five, you just find your superpower. That's what I mean when I am saying help you become the champion of your life. I'm always thankful for our time together. Again, I am Dre. I'm your mindset coach and mentor of change. If you have any questions, thoughts, or comments, go join you forecast hope for free. That's the letter U, uforecasthope.com. Join for free. Go in the community. Ask me questions. I'm always there for you. If you have anything that you need at all, any topic that you would like to pick my brain on, go in the community. Ask me. I'm always available for you. Until next time, continue blessings on your journey to become the champion of your dream life.